So, what is good, Chocolate Squad? It is your girl, Shayla, coming at you guys with another, another, another video. And today, we are doing 22 Horror Stories Animation at 22 Horror Stories Animated Compilation of August 2020. So, this is an hour and something long, so it's going to be like six different parts to this because it's so long. So, we only going to do like tops, 12 minutes tops of each one of these because I, I got to go to sleep. And I already said that I was going to go to sleep before this one, but I already did it already. So, I might as well go along with it at least 10 minutes. And not more than that because I got to get to sleep, y'all. But let's go ahead and get into it. And y'all know I'm scary. Y'all know it. I used to live in a small neighborhood with a large amount of woods next to our town. One day, my parents left me at home with my brother while they dropped my other brother off at football practice. That was the starting point. They had to stop abruptly in the middle of the road in the woods when they were driving back home. And that memory has been bothering my dad. Even now, he said. He said that he definitely saw something that day and remembered what it looked like. It was an extremely thin figure, around seven to eight feet tall. He was sure that it wasn't a bear, because when it saw their car, the thing stood up on two legs and ran away with a strange form. What the? It had lots of blotches on certain parts of its body, while other parts were losing hair or had none at all. And its back looked broken and poorly arched when it ran back into the woods. When my parents had warned me about it, even then, I never knew what it was. After I turned 10 years old, one day I had to stay home alone while my parents went to visit my uncle. So I invited seven of my friends over who all called Bella. They had to, he had to stay alone while they went to see the uncle. What type of parents is that? I ain't live. when I have a child, I'm not leaving them, him, whoever. I'm not leaving them nowhere by themselves. Brother won't leave them with someone else other than myself or people that's close to my family. I won't leave them with anybody. No. Leave them by themselves. He said he was 10. The fuck is going on in this household? Riley, Max, John, Kayla, Shannon, and Penelope. We had fun playing video games, watching movies, and things like that until midnight. Then I suddenly remembered that thing my dad had seen a few years ago. Hey, why don't we go searching for that creature? Looking at each other, we thought it would be a fun idea to try. So we grabbed our flashlights and headed out into the woods. Once we... I'm sorry, y'all, but that's where they be getting it all wrong. See, I don't want to say certain people is people that do things like this, but we all know white folks do this. You don't see now one black kid with them. Going through the woods to find some creature. You go, you see, so you can do things that's stupid. You could just stay in the house. But nah, you have to go searching, dummies. Walked in, everything mysteriously got way creepier, and the weird sounds got louder. The whole area was totally dark, be and the fear of getting lost was affecting all of us. Suddenly, we heard a loud crunching noise. We shined the flashlight in the direction of the sound, and finally, we saw it. There were some dead carcasses of deer, and I could see that there was some other big animal. At first, I thought it might be a bear that was eating off of those carcasses. However, that's not what it was. The thin, hairy, and almost eight-foot-tall creature was there. It looked at us with its blood-stained, sharp teeth and bloodshot eyes. Then it slowly got up and let out a penetrating howl. Not caring if branches hit us or if we got cut or bruised, we all screamed and ran away through the woods. We didn't know whether it was chasing after us or not, but we didn't care. We just needed to get back home as soon as possible. Finally, we jumped over the creek that was right in front of my house, ran up the hill into my house, and then locked the door. Everybody all right? 
Breathing hard, I looked at my friends, and then I realized something. Penelope was gone. We must have lost her in the woods somewhere as we ran away. Being terrified, I pulled out my cell phone with trembling hands, called 911, and told them about our situation. Within 15 minutes, paramedics, police, and our parents arrived. We explained again what we had seen and what happened to Penelope. The police searched the entire forest, but never found the thing or Penelope either. The only thing that had been discovered was some blood stains of hers. Well, I'm 12 years old now and none of us speak about what happened that day. The search for Penelope has been going on, but I'm positive that she's dead. Not just me. We all do. I recently did research on the thing and noticed that many other people had gone missing in my woods, mostly kids, and Penelope's disappearance made her the eighth child to go missing in those woods. I now no longer go into my woods because I'm afraid that if I do, that thing will find me one day and I will end up like Penelope. But Penelope would not, never got hurt if you didn't come up with a stupid idea. Then so I'm going to the woods. And then Penelope, Penelope and their other friends would be stupid enough to follow you. Because I would never follow you. You tell me to go to the woods with you, I'll be like, you stupid. You can go on your own, but i stay here. I'll watch your back. When you get back, I'll be here for you. But I ain't going no squat where with you, though, boo-boo. Dummies. My name is Caitlin. This incident happened when I was 14 years old, and I will never forget this memory. One day, I was at home alone at my house. My mom was still at the office late at night, and my two siblings were at my grandparents' house, which was kind of far away from my home. At first, I was just enjoying my time alone, watching Netflix and doing some fun stuff. However, after a while, I got pretty bored, so I decided to invite some of my friends over. I asked my mom for permission and then called my friends to invite them over. A few moments later, while I was waiting for them, I heard a loud bang upstairs. I was sure that there was no one else upstairs. So I stood up and looked up the stairs with an anxious look on my face. When I was near the stairs, I could see that one of my dolls had fallen. I picked it up and when I straightened my back, something caught my attention. A little girl was standing upstairs. Well, I could feel that she was staring at me, even though I couldn't see her face clearly due to the darkness. I was terrified, and then someone rang the doorbell. I ran to see who it was, and luckily, my friends had arrived. Thank God, it was a moment of relief that my friends came over at the right time. Soon, I got my mind off of the girl I saw. We sat down in the living room and had fun talking with each other. An hour later, one of my friends suggested that we should take some pictures together. So we gathered around one another. We took several selfies while laughing and chatting. Later, as we scrolled through the pictures, we found something. There was a little girl standing behind our couch. What made us even more terrified was the fact that she had no face. I mean, her face was just an empty darkness. No eyes, no nose, and no mouth. Being terrified, I told Cassie to delete that picture right away. However, she said that something was wrong with her cell phone. I snatched the phone out of her hands and tried to delete it. But no matter what we tried, we couldn't delete the picture. Then we heard loud thumps. It sounded like someone's footsteps were coming from upstairs, and our light was flickering on and off at the same time. We thought that we couldn't stay inside anymore, so we rushed outside in a hurry. One of my friends, Christina, suddenly pointed at my bedroom window and said that there was someone in there. 
I raised my eyes up and followed her finger, and there she was. It was the same faceless girl we had seen in the picture. My friends and I screamed. I called my mom and explained everything. My mom couldn't believe what I told her, so she made me calm down and said that she would be home in five minutes. After she arrived home, she searched the entire house, but she couldn't find any trace of the girl. I hoped that it was just our imaginations. However, we soon decided to move out of the house because I kept seeing the girl after that incident. We finally moved, and from then on, my mom never wanted me to be home alone, so I always stayed with my siblings. I still have no clue why the girl haunted me, but I think it was because she wanted us to get out of the house. Well, I'm just glad that I don't see that girl in my new house. That's, that's good. I mean, she ain't really do nothing stupid in that one. This happened to me while I was on my way home one night. I was living in an apartment at the time. When I arrived on the first floor of my building, there was a piece of paper hanging on the wall that said that the elevator was out of service. I actually like these little combinations. So I'm going to do a lot of these because I like them. But I'm getting tired, y'all, and I'm hungry. I need to tell my hair down, eat, and go to sleep. So I love you guys. With that being said, see you later, Chocolate Squad. See you later. See you later, Chocolate Squad. See you later. Love you guys. See you in the next video. Peace.